Just want to point out if it was not really apparent yesterday that Marson down here in the comments did something pretty amazing. You'll notice that the unit tests themselves were making wonderful progress we're already up to around 80% and we're still finding bugs. And it just shows that unit tests, even with extremely high coverage, still do not expose all bugs. The number one thing next to self code review in a quiet place for an hour that is scientifically proven to help is peer review. And this is one of the wonderful things about sharing things on social networking and social network code places like GitHub is that people from around the world can say, yo dog, you got a lot of unit tests, but your code is still broken. So props to Marson for illustrating that code review is still the best. We are going to extract one of the last hardcore things, and that's actual database queries are one of the most main things that you write integration tests on. If I do a get for my database, do I get this data? If I do a post, does it actually update? Things like that. So we need to make sure that we've tested as much of this as possible to get this to the fringe. Only thing we're really caring about is the actual data. We don't want to care about anything else. So let's get these last two pieces here and we'll get this guy into something called just a simple function, search address by zip. What does the function do? Well, it searches an address by zip. So we pass in the connected DB instance for unit testing purposes and the zip we want to search by. And given the fact that there's all these nested callbacks, we're just going to go ahead and wrap it with a promise because I don't really have time to unwind this massive nastiness. Take this copy pasta and here the DB will map to the DB and get a collection. The zip will map to this guy. But instead of actually dealing with Restify, all we're concerned about is if it works, great. If it didn't, go ahead and report an error. Otherwise, report the docs that we were looking for. This is a simple way to wrap a database query, assuming your database is already connected. Gets the collection, does all the weird find to array blah 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 and gives us back. So let's go ahead and unit test that if we send this a connected DB with a zip, that it gives us back some array of restaurants. Export it out, go to the top, paste it in. We'll describe. So again, this is our database query that we're mocking and using fixtures for to verify that it's unit tested hardcore. It should work if zip matches and gives us an array. If we call a database query and everything's good, it should give us an array back. So given the fact this is an asynchronous query, we'll go ahead and put async here. And we're more interested in the data at this point. We are not interested if the promise returns successful from, you know, dot then, or if a dot catch, we don't care. We just care, do we get data or not? So results await search address by zip. We'll give it some kind of mock good DB collection here. We gotta go write that. We'll do one, two, three, four, five, six is a fake zip. If we look at the database here, it has a collection, which is a method that returns something. And this something has a method called find, which returns something that has a method to an array, which takes a callback, which eventually gives you your docs. That is gonna be fun to mock. <laughs> All right, let's start one thing at a time. So the mock good DB collection, again, is an object, which as a collection method, you pass it the collection name that you want, and it appears to give you some mock good collection. What is a collection? A collection is the one that's complicated. A mock good collection is also an object that has a find method that you pass like, hey, here's what I'm looking for, some Mongo database query. And it returns an object that has some kind of to array method, which takes a callback. And this callback bit eventually gives you your data or error. So we'll just say, this is a good one. So it's not gonna give us an error. It's gonna give us an array. And then array, let's put some fixture data for now, name, Food place. That is how you mock a database using Mongo. Is array results should be true if it's correct. So let's rerun our test here. Okay, we're good. Fantastic. Finds the food place. So let's verify the actual data we got back is what we were expecting. We hard coded the food place. It better be food place. We'll copy paste this and make sure that this is a sync. But instead of actually verifying the array, let's get the actual item of the array. Food place is the first and only item. The food place name should equal food place because we hard coded it. There's no way this can fail because it's a unit test with all fake data in a controlled environment, it better work. We run our tests and we're good to go. So now that we've verified our database query actually works, assuming that A, the DB is connected and B, there are actually are results in the database, two things that we cannot possibly control, then at least we know that our handling of that data and the handling of those errors is legit. Instead of doing collection data, we're just gonna return it with a zip. 
DB. If there's any error in here or inside of the database trying to connect to this guy, or if the zip's bad or it doesn't find any results, we'll get it here. We can get rid of all this now and convert it to a place down here. So if our search address does respond correctly and are not then here, we're going to get our documents, the things that we were looking for, aka the array of restaurants we are searching for by zip. If we get them, we can just go ahead and respond to the client just like this. We don't need any of this anymore because we're already wrapping all that in search by zip. And we don't need any of this anymore because if we get results, we'll send it to the client. This is a lot easier to read. Rerun our tests. We didn't break anything by refactoring. Fantastic. NPM run coverage to see how much progress we've made. And then go ahead and open them up in a web page. Show coverage. 85. Making huge gains. Huge gains. A lot of white, a lot less red. We haven't tested the failure of listen server, Crummy River. Search address by zip, looking pretty good. We could still test for a failure to connect to the DB. That's okay. We'll handle that in a bit with a bad mock. Now we only have four untested line in this API. The next step is going to test this guy. But already you're making a significant amount of progress. Now, a lot of your queries are going to look just like this, where you've unit tested both the success and eventually failure. The only thing you're concerned about is the actual data. This zip right here, which will come back right here is docs. If you give that input, do you get this output? That's what our integration tests are really going to deal with. They're not going to worry about any of this other stuff that we've already unit tested, which is wunderbar. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you take a database query and abstract it away into a nice pure function with a unit test around it. And it puts the edges of the things that we actually need to integration test.